Coming up on today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show, the PSVR hits another massive sales milestone. We've got loads of Firewall Zero Hour news. We've got Dreams VR news updates. We've got No Man's Sky coming to PSVR. We've got Iron Man exclusively coming to PSVR. We've got Five Nights at Freddy's coming to PSVR. We have all the all of the games coming to PSVR. We've got dates for games that we already knew were coming, but that we didn't know when they were coming. Now we got the solid release dates. For example, Blood and Truth, that was a big one. We got a release date for that. Now, all that and more on the Pumpkin Patch Show. So hey there lads and ladies, welcome to episode number nine of the Pumpkin Patch Show, a PSVR focused show that also just so happens to be the number one most popular show ever made. Now that is a fact, just don't Google that, okay? Don't, don't fact check what I'm saying. Just accept it, okay? I'm Petrifying Pumpkins, and as always, I am joined by a special guest host. Now, today's guest host is none other than the shitheads who are very angry that Sony are still supporting VR. Shitheads, how's it going? Pleasure to have you here. I hope you're well. Why don't you have a little tissue, you little bitch, huh? Suffering from success, lads. PS VR has sold 4.2 million units as of the 3rd of March this year. This is according to Sid Schumann over at the PS blog. So back in August, we were told that the PS VR had sold 3 million. So that means it's taken seven months to sell 1.2 million units. Now that's not bad for a gimmick, a eh, shithead? Now why should you care about the PSVR selling 4.2 million units? Well, the more that the PSVR sells and the more that it increases its lead over the competition, that means the more games we'll see coming to PSVR as more and more developers will look at PSVR and say that's where the money is and they'll bring their games there. So that's good news for us PSVR owners. So well done to the PSVR. And if, you're happen if you happen to be watching this and you don't already have a PSVR, then now is the perfect time to jump in. And these next few things I'm gonna talk about are some great reasons why you should jump in. Two maps for the price of none. So those of you who keep their ears to the ground when it comes to firewall zero hour will probably already know that something is coming on the 1st of April. We just didn't know exactly what. Well, that supposedly has changed thanks to a community or developer live stream from First Contact Entertainment's Frank which took place last night, which was Wednesday. Now, I did restream that stream on this channel so that we could catch all the new details live, but if you didn't happen to see that stream, I'm just gonna briefly bullet point the new shit that we saw. So first up, in the lobby menu, we saw a new contractor name. Now, we didn't actually see the contractor herself, but we do know her name is Ruby, she's from the United Kingdom, and she has a skill called Thief. Now, Thief allows her to hack dead enemies and steal their crypto basically it's an interesting skill but keep in mind we didn't actually see her we just saw her name and we know where her skill is now another interesting change that we saw in firewall was the removal of the large red names that you would see floating over enemies heads instead those have been replaced with red arrows or red chevrons if you want to be correct about what those shapes are now some people might be wondering what's the benefit to this well, I think it makes it more fair as people who had really long PlayStation names, their names would sometimes just like stick out behind objects and stuff. Whereas people with the smaller names, they had a bit of an advantage in that way. Now everyone's got the same, same length chevron over their head. So it's a more even playing field, we think. Now, interestingly, during the stream, we saw the CEO of First Contact Entertainment, Hess Barber himself, he made a cameo appearance in the corner of the screen. Now, what he was wearing was some kind of Oculus Rift headset, I think, or some kind of PC viewer headset. He was going around with the motion controllers. Some people are speculating that means maybe Firewall is coming to PC VR. Now we have to keep in mind that Sony do own the Firewall Zero Hour IP. So that means the chances of Firewall coming to PC aren't exactly very high. 
But recently, Sony have allowed titles that they've already owned, that they own the IP to, I should say, like Beyond Two Souls and Detroit Become Human. They're coming to the Epic Game Store. So maybe Sony are loosening their policies. Maybe we will see Firewall on the PC VR. Or it could just be that Hess was just messing around, having the lols, having the bants. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So also worth noting is that we've seen changes to spawn locations on both the compound map and the bunker map. Now those are two of the maps where Russian can be brutal, especially when you're out, you have a dirty spawn location. So the fact that they've actually gone in there, changed some things around, that could give like a new twist on some of the older maps. And speaking of maps, most importantly of what we've seen perhaps, was that First Contact Entertainment teased not one, but two brand new maps. Now one of them they actually showed in action, the other one was just a blink and you miss it kind of screenshot. So the one that we did see was called Hangar. Now this takes place in an airport terminal, hangar at an airport, something like that. It takes place during the daytime, which is like the first time we've seen a map do that. It has, it looks fairly large. It has interiors, it has exteriors, and uh, it might be worth noting, but if you read the signage around the map, there's exit signs and stuff like that. That's all in English. So there's a chance that this map is set in an English speaking country. That might just be placeholder signage. I don't know, map might not be fully ready yet. We'll have to wait and see. But it looks like it could be in an English speaking country. So then the other map that we saw, which was on the map selection screen, we didn't even see the picture. We just saw the title and that could be a working title. It might not be the final title. It was FOB or FOB. Now, if you played Metal Gear Solid 5, you'll probably be familiar with the word FOB or the anagram F or the acronym FOB, which stands for Forward Operating Base. This is basically just a military base that is forward in the in the battle lines or you know just out there somewhere. The name doesn't exactly give us any hints of where this could be. It could be anywhere in the world really. But it's mostly just nice to see that we're getting two maps confirmed concrete. Now it's hard to say if all of this stuff that they've shown and teased will be coming on the April 1st kind of patch that we're expecting. But it's probably safe to say that at least some of us will be. I had a dreams. So if you've been looking forward to Media Molecule's dreams finally entering early access, then I have good news for you because dreams is coming to early access on the 16th of April, which is very close. Now, if you're one of the people like me who was just super excited for dreams solely for the fact that it has PSVR support, I've got some slightly bad news in that the early access will not support VR, will not support PSVR, and that they will add VR support to the game later on. And they didn't go into any further details about it. Now, Dream's early access is going to be somewhat limited. You can buy it on the 16th of April, provided you're in one of the supported countries. You can buy it for a price of $30 if you're in America, $40 in Canada, that's $24.99 sterling and $29.99 euro. Now if you're like me and you're just really excited for the VR aspect, then I'd still recommend trying to grab a copy of the early access because I'm sure that the price will go up once Dreams leaves the early access phase and may become a full price game. So right now it's kind of half price, so it could be a good investment to get it now while it's cheap and then by the time it's released it'll have VR support and you'll have it for half price. But if this is something you want to do, then I would recommend that you act quickly as there is a limited quantity of codes that Media Molecule will be supplying to the PSN. So be quick to avoid disappointment. Speaking of disappointments, are you hyped for Dreams, shitheads? What, what do you think about Dreams and VR? The No Man's Sky is the limit. No Man's Sky is coming to VR this summer as part of the No Man's Sky Beyond updates, which will be free to all existing owners of No Man's Sky. So that's right, Sean Murray, who only a couple of years ago was one of the most hated game developers of all time, has had an epic redemption arc and has pretty much become the Jesus of video games lately thanks to the constant support, post-launch support, that Hello Games have put into No Man's Sky all for free since 20 
16 or whatever year it was it came out and i think we can all agree that the vr patch is going to be the coolest now the best thing about this update is that it's not just going to be a separate vr mode the entire no man sky experience will be available in vr including multiplayer including exploration flying your ship around dog fighting piracy whatever it is you do in that game all of it can be done in vr and not only that it's going to be coming to vr on pc too and it will be cross play with playstation so you can play with your oculus and your rift buddies in vr or just the flat versions as well i will assume now no man's sky is fairly cheap right now if you go looking in places like gamestop so I would recommend that you snatch up a copy while you can because people have been snatching them up quick since the news of this update broke. Now it's important to note that Hello Games didn't just want to port it to VR and just put the VR vision only. They wanted to make it a true VR experience. That's why you're going to be using both move controllers. You're going to be interacting with things just like you would if the game was built from the ground up with VR in mind. So that's really cool. You can look forward to that. Virtual Downy Reality Jr. So Iron Man VR is going to be a PS VR exclusive coming sometime to PS VR in 2019. Now this is going to be developed by Camouflage Studios, the same team behind Republic. And they've even got members of like Metal Gear Solid X staff on their on their team, you know, so they have a talented team. Now, we don't know an awful lot about the game, seeing as most of the reveal trailer was a CG cutscene. But the brief glimpses that we did guess showed us that we'll be using both move controllers, using Tony Stark's hand blasters and his chest blaster to, you know, shoot down shit in the sky, assuming there's definitely flies. We don't know if there's going to be ground stuff too, yes but there's definitely gonna be flies. Now, a lot of people have been concerned of what they've seen. They're wondering, is this gonna be on rails? Is this gonna be just a 20 minutes experience? Now, the one thing I have seen that maybe points otherwise is during the gameplay, you can see a compass at the top of the screen. Now, if this game was really just on rails or whatever, you wouldn't really need a compass. Now, of course, it could just be there for show or for set dressing, you know, whatever. But I think it's, it's it's a small hint, at least, that this game is going to be somewhat... Maybe, maybe something like Ace Combat 7. We'll have to wait and see for more details, but definitely keep an eye on this one. Iron Man is definitely a huge name for Sony to grab as a PSVR exclusive. It could have the potential to actually move units. Five Nights at Freddy's is better than one night at MJ's. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted VR is officially confirmed. I believe I talked about this either a video or maybe two episodes ago of the Pumpkin Patch show. Now we have confirmation. Basically, it's going to bring back the levels from the classic games as well as add brand new levels specifically for Help Wanted. And you're going to have your jump scares, you're going to have cameras and robots things and it's all going to be in VR. So if you're somebody who's into Five Nights at Freddy, you should definitely check this one out. This one is coming sometime spring of this year, so not too far away, potentially. Save the days. So speaking of release dates, we got a bunch of release dates for games that we already knew about. So I'm just going to quickly list out all the stuff that we learned. So we got Skyworld, a real-time strategy game from the makers of Arizona Sunshine. That's actually already released on the 26th of March, so that one popped out fast. Falcon Age then, the Falcon game is coming on the 9th of April, so that's very soon. Ghost Giant will be with us on the 16th of April. Table of Tales is also coming on the 16th of April. Jupiter and Mars, which is that dolphin game you may have seen, that's coming on the 22nd of April. Everybody's Golf VR. Now that one looks kind of cool. That's coming on the 21st of May. Blood and Truth, which looks really good. That got a new trailer, by the way. Definitely check that out. That's going to be coming on the 28th of May, and pre-orders are available for that, so if you want to grab that now, you can go ahead and do that. Trover Saves the Universe, which is the next Justin Roiland game. Now, that's coming the 31st of May, so not too long after Blood and Truth. Then you've got Mini Mech Mayhem. That's coming June 18th. Vacation Simulator is also coming out that same day. And Gollum. That's the game. I feel like I've been hearing about that game for about a thousand years. That one is coming spring 2019, so surprisingly close. And especially seen as we didn't even see a trailer for that or anything. We just got that release date on the PlayStation blog coming spring 2019. So keep an eye out for that one. Luna is another game coming spring 2019. Luna is going to be some kind of relaxing puzzler type game. I'm not too interested in this one, if I have to be honest. And that's it for release dates. 
as you can see, some of them are a bit vague. Not, not not all of them are specific release dates. Some of them are like spring or whatever, just windows. But still, spring is not long. Well, we're kind of already in spring now, aren't we? But just let me know in the comments which of those kind of bunch of games are you guys interested in grabbing. I know I'm interested in grabbing Blood and Truth, obviously, that's the big one. But I was surprised to find myself kind of gravitating towards that everybody's golf VR game. If that has online stuff like that, I could, I can definitely see myself snabbing, snabbing, snabbing that one on day one. So tell me, shithead, do you like the look of these games? What do you think about these games? You know what? That that actually raises a good question. Why are so many people salty over all these v PS VR games that are coming? Let's take a closer look. Are you getting thirsty from all that salt, lads? So PlayStation's State of Play, which was their Nintendo Direct type thing, which is where we got all the info I've been talking about this whole video, was great as far as I'm concerned, but there is no denying there was a lot of whinging going on afterwards, especially from the flat gaming portion of uh, the gaming demograph out there. So to discuss this, I've invited back fan favorite Dr. Reginald Siegel to talk about this phenomenon of why people are getting so salty over Sony supporting their own platform. Professor Siegel, you're very welcome. Can you please tell me, Professor Siegel, why'd these bitches be getting all salty? Well, yeah, we've been doing some studies on this back in Harvard University. And to be honest with you, we've been finding a direct correlation between penis size and the level of saltiness that these people are exhibiting. The more salt you see, the less size of the penis in terms of length and girth. You know, is it really as simple as that, Professor Siegel? Well, we've got bear charts. You know, we've got the bear charts. The bear charts don't lie. That's what we do at Harvard University. So that's all we've got time for on this episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show. But before I go, let me give a very special thanks to all my Patreon supporters who are on the screen right now. They're putting food on my table and they're helping this channel grow. Now right now we're working towards getting a sexy new microphone, so big thanks to them. And if you want to help out, then you can check out the link that will be in the description. But if you don't want to do that, which is perfectly understandable, then you can simply help me out by doing the old fashioned stuff. The liking and the subscribing and the commenting and sharing the video to places where people might want to be watching it. If such a place exists, I don't know. And I will appreciate that a lot as well. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you lads and ladies in the next one. Bye for now.